again ma'am in five seconds.
Wasn't that a beautiful sunset? That was from my home province of Antique, and I'm sure all of you, well, our three valued guests today and our Facebook viewers would want to visit Antique one day after all the CQCQ <laughs> community quarantine. But for those who have just tuned in or on Facebook Live or within our Zoom, this is already the 30th uh, webinar episode since the middle of the pandemic when we passed on third reading in the House of Representatives the Better Normal Bill. Ito po'y isang pano ka lang batas para ang ating pag-akma sa ating buhay sa bagong normal ay magiging sustainable, magiging maayos, magiging ligtas sa ating kapakaligiran, kalikasan at kalusugan. Akala natin po ay isang season lang yan na anim o isang dosena. Pero dahil napakarami sa mga kabataan, mga millennial, pati na rin mga senior citizens, at pati na rin kaliblib na kabundukan, ay natututo at maraming uh, mga bagong uh, paniwala, polisiya at proyekto ang natututunan sa ating mga istorya. Di ba? Sa antike puro istorya. This is a stories for a better normal, a collaboration between and among my office, the Climate Change Commission, the International Group of uh, Climate and Sustainable Cities, and the Climate Reality of Vice President Al Gore, as well as the Mother Earth Foundation. So you see how local governments and private entities and government as well can collaborate in the new norm for a better normal, from urban mobility to permaculture, uh, to sustainability and slow living, many many more topics but today is extra special because it's our first episode if i'm not mistaken 30th wow and we have a growing viewership uh because it's on our facebook it's on our youtube and many of our teachers our students even principals ask us even in depth ed if they can go back to it i said of course you can go back because it's just there now this is extra special because it's the first in the new year at the same time we have three valued guests who have taken it as part of their lives and advocacy to transform not just their lives and their communities but also the way people think and so you might think, anong connection ng bambu? Anong connection ng pagkain? Anong connection ng edukasyon at ng plastic? Lahat po yan ay kasama sa ating tinatawag na sustainable living. Lahat po yan ay bunga din ng aking pano kalang batas sa House of Representatives at sa aking tatlong termino sa Senado. Iba po ay naisabatas na. Ang iba ay nakapending sa Kongreso. Kaya hindi na po ako magpapahaba ng aking salita. Sigurado ako gusto ninyong ma-renew, ma-restart, at ma-recharge. And I am sure our first lady guest who is a champion of philanthropy, who is the founder and chair of Hope in a Bottle and the Plastic Credit Exchange, which we will discuss today. It is an impact company. Hope invests 100% of its profits in improving public school education space and small holder farmer productivity. That's exactly two of the most valued uh, advocacies which we share with our guests today. What is the plastic credit exchange? She will tell us about this first nonprofit global fully integrated plastic offset platform. Technical terms, we will simplify it for you. So Nanette Medved Paul received the NGO Leadership Award among many awards and Social Innovation Leadership Award and many more. So we will have her today and she will explain to us how the plastic credit exchange can actually be beneficial to our companies that produce plastic, how it can be supplementary in a world where there's so much plastic, where the Philippines is the third 
biggest plastic polluter in the world. Tabing dagat, lawa, ilog, Metro Manila, pati nung panahon na Ondoy, hindi ba ang nakabaha sa atin yung mga plastic sa ating mga daluyan ng tubig. We have a solution. And that solution is a plastic credit exchange. And while the single-use plastic ban, my bill in the Senate, my bill in the House of Representatives is not yet a law. This can supplement it. And even while it is going to be enacted into law, as already advocated no less by Secretary Dominguez, the plastic credit exchange can be an option for many of our corporations. So we have online Nanette Medvedpo. Hello, Nanette. Good morning and Happy New Year. And she will tell us about the plastic credit exchange. Pa paano ba ito, Nanette, ang plastic credit exchange? Una, pa paano mo naisip? Pangalawa, pa paano natin papalaganapin? At pangatlo, ano ang benepisyo nito sa mga korporasyon na nagproduce ng plastic, sa mga komunidad na nababaha sa plastic, at makakatulong sa ating kalikasan, kapakiligiran. Good morning and Happy New Year. I hope I can see you online and not the logo of the Climate Change Commission. Hi, kamusta ka na? Mabuti naman, um, Lauren. Thank you for having me this morning and Happy New Year to all, everyone on the Zoom as well as all of your viewers po. Um, would you like me to answer that question straight away, Lauren? Or gusto yes. mo present mo na ako ng aking uh, deck? Oh, oh. <laughs> so, okay. uh, whichever is more comfortable for you. Pero uh, kung pwede, ay huwag natin kakalimutan yung tanong ko. Kasi yeah. yan ang tanong ng marami. Oh, sige. Pasensya oh, na. Sanay kasi ako sa Kongreso, sa Senado. Ratatatatat. Pero <laughs> daka, pinaghirapan mo yung iyong presentasyon. <laughs> Natutuwa ako dyan. Matututo kami mula sa iyo at marami pang mga guro ay matututo mula sa iyo. Go ahead, Nanette. Sige po. So maybe I should start first with a very brief uh, introduction kung bakit po namin naisip gawin to. So siguro lahat naman tayo nakikita natin na problema talaga ang plastic for all the reasons that um, uh, uh, Lauren um, raised earlier. No, Yung mga kalat natin dyan, it's not only polluting our environment, causing flooding, uh, you know, there are health concerns uh, and really choking up the planet. I think these are all of the issues that we see together na dapat masolusyonan because plastic, as we all know, is not going anywhere. Oh my goodness, once na, na, na nailabas na yan sa environment, just ko, hanggang forever na yan nandyan, di ba? So we really need to find ways to solve this problem. And since nanggaling po ako sa um, background na hindi lang non-profit where I'm really concerned about the environment board member po ako ng WWF, uh, but I also come from the business side, which is gumagamit po ng mga plastic packaging para makadeliver po ng uh, safe at mura na uh, products doon sa ating mga uh, Filipino brothers and sisters. So, nag-isip ako, paano ba natin masusolusyonan to? And I really felt that we should not penalize the poor in our um, solution, but rather come up with a uh, somewhat you know, polluter pay or uh, or producer pay system to clean up uh, plastic waste post consumer so that it does not endanger our communities and does not endanger our planet. So ganun po yan nag, nag start. So let me try and share with you a very brief presentation that we prepared. Um, if you don't mind. So I will uh, I hope you can see my my screen. Sorry. <laughs> Marami pala akong presentation na, na inalabas here. Okay. So, better normal. Um, so, today po, we're really looking at making plastic neutrality a reality. And alam naman po natin na um, hindi lang uh, plastic is a problem prior to COVID, but naging mas worse ngayong COVID, hindi lang dahil sa most uh, single 
use plastic bans have been rolled back for safety reasons, but uh, nadagdagan pati yung ating mga uh, medical implements who also rely heavily on plastic. So kung meron tayong COVID crisis, meron po rin tayong plastic crisis na nakikita. The Plastic Credit Exchange, as uh, was mentioned earlier, is the world's first global nonprofit, and we are a fully integrated uh, offset platform. What that means is basically, yung mga uh, companies or individuals sa buong mundo, kung gusto nila mag kalat sa New York pero maglinis sa Pilipinas, kaya po natin gawin yun because plastic waste is plastic waste kahit saan mo dalhin. And uh, the thing with cleaning up in the Philippines, we are really the epicenter, part of the epicenter of the plastic pollution crisis. Eight out of ten of the countries who are the worst polluters are in our neck of the woods, kumbaga. So, until we find a better way out of plastic, yung mapapalitan natin ng plastic ang mas magandang material, we need to find a seamless, traceable, and effective solution po to offset post-consumer plastics responsibly para hindi naman natin mahanap yan sa nature. The way our exchange works, um, medyo technical po ito, but I thought I would put it anyway para later if in case anyone has questions. Uh, medyo simple po yung ating proseso. So sabihin na natin po, merong mga company dyan na ang produkto nila is, kunwari, nakasashay, and they want to make sure na yung kalat nila, linis nila. So they will let the exchange know na, uh, meron po kami, kunwari, 1,000 tons of plastic packaging na naibenta within the market this month. So gusto rin namin maglinis din ng katumbas din ng kalat namin na 1,000. Pag nag-pledge na po sila, uh, the Plastic Credit Exchange will activate yung aming mga partners para mangolekta ng mga basura na, na, na uh, plastic waste. no And we... Uh, transport it and valorize it sa aming mga partner processors na pumasa po sa uh, environmental uh, requirements ng DENR because the last thing we want to do po is to get plastic out of our esteros and out of uh, our waters or out of our uh, you know side side streets tapos yun pala ikakalat din natin sa air di ba so we have to make sure that the partners we are working with are compliant with all of the environmental regulations once na nagawa na po namin yon pinapa verify namin uh, we have our exchange audited by third party auditors to make sure na tama po yung aming proseso and we then register online yung aming uh, na offset para sa companies na kausap namin. So kung kayo po ay gustong sumuporta ng responsible consumption, pwede nyo nalang tignan doon sa online registry kung sino yung mga company na hindi pasaway. Kumbaga, uh, yung, mga, yung mga nagiging voluntarily responsible to the point that the deputy speaker was making earlier, uh, wala pa naman yung batas na EPR uh, until such time na this is not has not been enacted into law, sino ba ang mga kumpanya dyan na talagang voluntarily trying to be responsible and sustainable uh, with their uh, packaging or their products. So once na gawa na na po namin yun, uh, there is a final step for some companies na talagang very, very good. They want to be, hindi lang sila nag offset but they want to be officially declared plastic neutral. Uh, medyo mahabang usapan yon. I'm happy to get into more detail about that uh, later kung may interesado. But basically, it requires them to commit to sign a contract to say that their company will not be uh, uh adding to the past plastic pollution problem by 100% offsetting their footprint annually uh, for several years. So sa ngayon po, uh, unfortunately, because of uh, COVID, uh, hindi namin na-reach yung aming goal for 2020, pero kahit na ganun pa man, we were able to clean up over 14 million tons, uh, 14 million kilos of plastic waste and had it processed away from nature. And Nakatulong po kami sa mga community na, that we are working with to more than 64 million pesos. And we have signed up five out of the ten global plastic polluters uh, and, and reduced 
uh, carbon emissions by over 23,000 tons. Our Aling Tindera program, which is our flagship program, is a waste to cash model. Now we work with women, sorry, sorry, store owners in communities. Uh, we have a pilot with the city of Manila with Mayor Isco, because as we all know, po, he ran on a platform of uh, cleaning up, no? Ayaw niya yung basura. So this was a very good program to work with him on. He wanted us to roll out across the city of Manila. 100 Aling Tindera stations to cover all 897 barangays so that uh, anybody po in the community na may plastic basura kesa itsa-itsahin kung saan or it's a login or you know worse, um, they can bring it to their closing, closest Aling Tindera and exchange that po for cash. So it helps uh, the women, sorry, sorry, store owners who are uh, empowered as um, sustainability advocates and, and ambassadors, it helps the community because they, they're able to increase their income increment, incrementally sa households. Lalo na yung mga fishermen, pag nakita mo po dito sa bottom left ng screen mo, di ba yung ating mga fishermen, they have to go out further for longer and they are catching less. So sinasabi po namin is, Kesa bumalik kayo na walang laman yung bangka nyo, andyan na rin lang kayo, kargahan muna ng mga ocean plastic, bibilhin po na ng aming aling tindera para may kita rin sila sabay naglilinis, di ba? Um, so that is a program we're very excited about na hopefully that will uh, take off in, in a meaningful way. Uh, where does the money of PCX go? So sinabi ko na we are a non-profit. So... Traditionally, all of that money used to go to aggregating logistics and processing. Pero itong year na to, medyo, we want to be a little more aggressive in the way we spend our money. We will be allocating uh, a fund for infrastructure. Marami po tayo dyan, mga underserved communities, especially those in hard-to-reach areas. Gusto sana namin silang tulungan. Uh, nagawan ng infrastructure to be able to manage their plastic waste uh, better, more effectively. Then we have an education fund to hopefully encourage behavior change para matuto naman natin kung paano yung circular economy. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about is, I don't know po kung napapansin nyo, pero siguro hindi nyo nakakita yung mga papel at glass na nakakalat dyan sa tabi-tabi, di ba? Iniipon natin yan because nabibenta. So gusto namin mangyari sa plastic, ganun din. Hindi yan i-itsa-itsahin kung saan, kung talagang may halaga yan at mabibenta nila. So if we can assign a value to that, uh, we will be helping in the circular economy by reducing, reusing, and recycling. So yan yung ating education fund will hopefully go into uh, helping spread the word about that. And then yung aming negative tonnage fund will go into hopefully may 80 years po tayo of historical buildup of plastic waste in nature. So yung mga companies who are doing the right thing to try and offset their current and future plastic footprints, wag naman po natin kalimutan yung naipon na na 80 years worth of plastic. Sana po makolekta din natin yan para mawala na rin sila sa nature. So as I said, no, it helps the consumer the, the, the work we do, hopefully, by making responsible consumption easier. Pag nakita po nyo yung badge namin sa product, ibig sabihin, yung kumpanya na yon is offsetting all the plastic in that product. Uh, it is helping businesses because marami sa kanila naghahanap lang talaga ng paraan to be responsible for their plastic footprints. And we are hoping we're giving them an easy way to do that until there is a better solution. No, we're he helping communities clean up, women to champion. Governments are getting relief kasi medyo heavily taxed ang waste system natin. Plus, they are able to comply with the Solid Waste Management Act with our programs. And nakaka-minus sila sa gastos when it comes to waste hauling because we do take care of, it, of that for them uh, for free. No? And then uh, finally, which is most important and why we are all here today, is it benefits uh, the planet, allowing nature a chance to heal if we don't continue to pollute and try and clean what has already been polluted. So my last slide is we envision a world where there is no plastic in nature and where plastic waste finds its way back into a circular economy. Thank you. 
That's great. And I'm glad, Nanette, that you mentioned first Republic Act 9003, the Ecological <laughs> Solid Waste Management Law. Alam ba ninyo? Sinurat ko yan 1998 pa. So it's uh, what, 23 years ago? Higit na sa dalagita. Ito <laughs> na enact, naging batas, January of 2001, ang kauna-unahang batas na nalagdaan ni dating Pangulong Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo. So it was a law, January 2001, right after the Payatas tragedy, when a young senator in 1998 talked about garbage and ecologically segregating garbage at source recycling and composting, some of the machos, I will not name who, looked and said, Ha? Huh? Tung batang senador na to? Na-elect? Tapos ang pag-uusapan lang niya? Basura? Opo, basura. <laughs> Fast forward 2021, January, anibersaryo pala natin ngayon, Nanet, sa ating shared advocacy. Kasama natin uh, si Earl at si Chef Tatung na pag-uusapan din mamaya. Anibersaryo nga pala ito ng RA 9003. So, I'm so glad you mentioned that because only... 25% of the 108 million Filipinos or local governments actually implement. So plastic credit exchange. And our two guests later who will talk about Kubo Modular and will talk about even culinary heritage, whether big or small advocacies, whether in writing or in actually doing things in the national or global sphere or in communities, we are able to change the mindset of people. So back to this. Papaano kung may nanonood na medium-sized company ngayon na merong plastic waste na gusto nilang i-exchange, ibigay, kolektahin ninyo, sabi mo, libre. Aba, alam mo mga Pilipino at human nature, libre ay walang gastos. Okay. Papaano nyo kokolektahin? Paano sila mag-reach out sa inyo at mag-rehistro at saan nyo dinadala yung plastic? Meron pa kayong malaking bodega at anong klaseng, um, is it waste to energy uh, that is utilized uh, by the cement companies that transform the plastic into usable energy? These are just some of the questions percolating in my mind which I'm sure marami sa ating mga tagapanood ay interesado. Thank you, Nanette. Thank you, um, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker. Would you like me to address that now? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, we are very interested to talk to anybody who would like to participate in this exchange. Yung kagandahan ng amin pong ginagawa is the more, the better, di ba? Dahil yung hinaghahanap tayo is a, a scalable solution. Yung marami talagang sumasali sa movement na to. So any company out there or community out there or even an, uh, you know group of friends out there who would like to join the exchange, please feel free to reach out to us so that we can inform them best on how to participate. Now, pag sinabi po namin libre, it is usually on the aggregation front. Kokolektahin namin ng libre. However po, this is for post-consumer plastic. Kung ikaw po ay kumpanya who is uh, using plastic as your packaging or in your product, kayo po ay considered producer and producer or polluter must pay no so uh, we can find a way uh, to to integrate all these different parties into the platform we welcome all but maybe the nature of the relationships will change depending on the who is the partner when it comes to what do we do with the waste no so yes. a good example of a partnership which actually medyo uh, I, I, hindi pa announce sa 20 pa i-announce to but I, siguro unahin ko na dito we have a partnership with Shumart who will be who will be a partner aggregator for us together with the public so kinukuha po namin yan ng libre para hindi naman siya nakakalat kung saan saan and we bring it to processing partners now depende kung anong klase yung plastic na yan if that plastic is recyclable Ideally, we, we uh, channel it to recycling facilities. Now, unfortunately, siguro si Deputy Speaker knows this more than anyone. Kulang na kulang po talaga ang Pilipinas sa infrastructure when it comes to dealing with waste. Wala tayo mga 
big recycling facilities or pyrolysis, yung mga chemical recycling or merong waste to energy na katulad ng Singapore. What we really have here are very small operations for recycling. We export most of the material to be recycled abroad. But what we do have here at the moment uh, is... Uh, Coke is planning to build a, or is already in the process of building a recycling facility, which hopefully will be available in 2022. But until then, no, uh, and that's only taking PET, yung ating mga drinks bottles. So until then po, ang meron tayo dito is what is called, called co-processing. Yung co-processing po, uh, some people are have been very worried about that term because they are sanay na sa 1960s definition ng uh, incineration which is napaka, napakasama po talaga. But uh, co-processing nowadays is defined very differently as resource recovery uh, which they use as fuel. Yung mga plastic po natin, ginagamit nila as fuel to replace imported coal. No, kasi uh, 75% po ng coal natin dito sa Pilipinas is imported. And as we all know, coal is a very dirty uh, fuel. So what we were hoping, uh, although it is not a perfect solution, it is a bridge solution until we have better uh, uh, infrastructure in place or better materials in place. Ideally, companies find a way to get out of plastic kung kay kayang palitan ang ang packaging mo na hindi plastic, mas maigi, no? reduce. Pero kung hindi talaga po kaya or mag-reuse, you know, reusable containers, uh, yung maiiwan po, which is medyo marami kasi sa shay economy tayo, Filipinos are very poor. Ideally, those materials are recovered and uh, used as a resource na hindi masasayang. No? So we work with uh, co-processing, cement co-processing companies to use the plastic waste as fuel, but Hindi po lahat ng co-processing is wini-welcome po namin dahil uh, hindi lahat yan is, uh, uh, how would you say, compliant sa environmental requirements ng DENR. And we try to talk to partners who only are compliant with the United Nations Environment Programs Basel Convention na uh, hindi sila talaga yung nagpopollute sana sa, sa environment bago namin sila kausapin. <laughs> So that is uh, how we are currently doing it. Hopefully, as infrastructure projects start to come into the Philippines uh, and provide us with better recycling opportunities, uh, doon naman tayo pupunta kung pag, pagpasok na nila or pagbukas na po nila. Pero habang wala pa, uh, ito muna yung solusyon natin. Okay. Uh, whether it's a big company like SM or Coca-Cola or isang barangay, sa siyudad ng Maynila, ang plastic credit exchange ay maaring mangolekta ng plastic basta willing mag-cooperate yung komunidad o yung organisasyon o yung um, kompanya. Correct po. You can also, and kayo na ang bahala mag-hold kasi ang issue dito, I'm sure they can segregate because they have to segregate under RA9003. Pero yung pag-pick up sa bawat bahay, yung pag-pick up sa tambakan ng korporasyon, kayo na. You have the logistics. You have uh, the resources to do that. At kayo na rin ang maglalagay sa processing facilities na sabi nyo ay gagawing enerhiya ayon sa mga existing nating batas. Alam natin na uh, under the Clean Air Act, again, batas ko yun, 1999, bawal ang bashing kasi sasabihin na iba dahil sa batas ni Lauren, hindi tuloy magawa ito. I know that um, some people want to revisit this but that's another issue altogether. Perhaps another uh, episode on that. So, you can do that. Ngayon, interesting ha, na 14 million kilos ng plastic na ang inyong nakolekta, ang inyong narisikulo o nagamit into energy? Is that accurate, Nanette? Yes, more than 14 million. Actually, yung target po namin sana for 2020 was 25 million kilos. Kaya lang, nung nagka-COVID, marami na shutdown po. Wala, wala kaming operation. That's, Pero po, just as a clarification po, just to make sure na walang misunderstanding, hindi po kami kumukolekta sa mga companies ng kanilang manufacturing waste because manufacturing waste is responsibilidad po nila yan. We would be happy though, however, to, uh, 
to introduce them to companies who will pick up manufacturing waste, no? Um, pero for communities, definitely po, pwede namin gawin yon. In the case of SM kasi, uh, they are aggregating public waste for us. Hindi naman sila producer talaga ng plastic kasi packaging yeah. or products, no? So the SM malls or even in the case of Mega World where we have a partnership, doon kasi nag-iipon ang public and medyo marami yung basura nila, especially from the mga restaurants, di ba? And, and, the stock, and the shops. So these developers are are committing to aggregate the waste for us so that ma-pick up po namin and to make sure na hindi kung saan-saan mapunta yan, di ba? Kung saan maitapon. So those are the ones po that we are able to work with. In the case of Mayor Isko, kasi uh, hindi kami nagbabahay-bahay, no? That, that is not part of what we do. We work with the city in order for them to help consolidate. So yung Aling Tindera, Usually yung mga bahay-bahay, sila yung pupunta kay Aling Tindera para maibenta yung plastic. Yan na yung po yung consolidation namin. Kay Aling Tindera po kami nagpipick up. Napaka-timely ng ating episode dahil ngayon ay tinalaga na simula ng sampung taon, isang dekada on ecosystem restoration. The United Nations declared this whole decade up to 2030 as a decade on ecosystem restoration. And for the last three decades, 30 years, I've been enacting this loss on clean air, clean water, ecological solid waste management, renewable energy, and don't go away because aside from plastic exchange, ang ating culinary heritage at ang connection ng least use or no single use ng plastic sa pagluluto ay pag-uusapan din ni Chef Tatung. At siyempre, uh, ang ating uh, housing at ang sustainable housing uh, gaya ng mga ginagawa uh, ng Kubo Modular. Now, Nanette, yung Aling Tindera, that can be replicated in different cities, even in provinces like Antique. Uh, yes. Okay. Paano mo gagawin yan? Can't you be uh, replicated in the provinces in the Visayas and Mindanao? Or ang focus ba ninyo ay Metro Manila lamang? Or dahil pilot nyo Ang ciudad ng Maynila. Is it possible to do that uh, even without your physical presence there? Perhaps you can have a, a webinar or instruction and what to do, and you can have satellite uh, collectors, aggregators of the plastic. But the question is where do you transport all this plastic consolidated, and how do we make sure it does not go back into nature? Opo. So pwedeng pwede po. Kahit sa antiki po yan pwede gawin. No? We are able to, to replicate the Aling Tindera model anywhere in the country. There are just certain requirements na kailangan po namin. We need to work with the local government kasi sila po la, talaga ang partner namin pagdating sa Aling Tindera. Second, uh, we would simply require there to be at least 10 Aling Tinderas per uh, per region or per municipality because that is what is needed for us to create an efficient hall. And third, sana po, we can uh, talk to companies to, to be the one to guarantee to take the offtake from those communities uh, so that we can transport it all the way to our processors. Although may processors po kami nationwide, malamang may mahahanap kami at may mahahanap na malapit. Basta there is a LGU who is committed to really working with us to do this properly. You know, time is never enough. As you know, when we speak on the phone, when the presentation is done, and even here in stories, it is never, never enough. I hope you could stay on because our other guests today uh, have their own innovation, not just in their lives, but in their businesses. And Earl, thank you so much, Nanette, and I'll be in touch with you as always. And we'd like to perhaps zero in next time on one model will <coughs> you like Manila and see and have the women speak and they can be part of our online discussion. Thank you so much uh, for all well, the work you do. Uh, yes, oops. Yes, somebody is online. Can you mute yourself? Okay. Thank you so much, Nanette. And um, we will proceed now with Earl Forlales, co-founder and CEO of Kubo Modular, nakita ko yung kanya mga photos. Interesting. Sa 20 square meters, ang ganda-ganda ng kanyang ginagawang mga bamboo houses. Uh, ang sabi niya, Earl is chemist 
materials engineer. What does it mean, chemist materials? I know chemical engineer, but chemist materials engineer by education, but an architect by heart. I may be a mass comm by education and military national security, but yes, I'm also an architect by heart and an agriculturist by heart. Okay, so Earl, you have earned a degree in chemistry and wow. material science engineering. Yes, well. And um, you have a co-founder, mm -hmm. uh, Zara Zanjani, and you created this concept for an affordable housing. We should link you with the National Housing Authority for an affordable <laughs> housing solution na gumagamit ng bamboo, which is a number one sequester of carbon na napakalaganap sa ating yeah. bansa, pati na rin ng antike. At nanalo ka ng 2018 uh, Rick Cities for a Future Competition sa United Kingdom. Kubo Modular. Okay, you will show us how we can have access to sustainable, affordable, and dignified housing safe from pollution. Okay, and um, yeah. it is said that Earl lives up to the catchphrase. We see a world where everyone can say, I am home. Wag kayo umalis kasi mula sa pra plastic credit exchange, ngayon naman ay sa Kubo Modular, mamaya sa pagkain ni Chef Tatung Sartu, isang culinary heritage advocate. So he will be joining us later. In the meantime, alamin natin paano tayo magkakaroon ng affordable, sustainable housing sa Kubo Modular. Um, Earl, can you uh, show us yeah. your presentation? Thank you. Yes, well, thank you very much, Paul Kong Lauren. And uh, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here for sharing our story. You know? um, ako po si Earl Forlales, uh, co-founder at CEO ng Kubo Modular. Uh, meron po akong co-founder, si Zara Zanjani. Siya naman po ang aming uh, COO. So, unang-una po, uh, I apologize in advance kasi we're currently on-site. We're currently building uh, a Kubo here in Pampanga. No? So, kasalukuyan po yan nagagalap mo yun. Um, kaya baka po merong mga uh, bit of noise in the background. No no need apology. So, um, uh, no need apology. In fact, gusto namin makita yung background mo. <laughs> Kung pwede mong ikutin yung camera mo, ikutin mo yung telepono mo, yes, so, tuwan-tuwa ako sa mga ganyan. O, ako, sige. pwede po yan. Pwede kang, alam mo, pwede kang nagsasalit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Upo, pakita mo sa akin yung magagaling na nagpupukpuk siya. Oo, oh, yeah. sige po, walang problema. <laughs> sige, okay, sige proceed, proceed. Okay. Ayan po. So, uh, eto po yan, sa Pampanga po ito. Um, are you able to see? Yung pong, uh, eto. Yes, maganda. No, nakita ko yung, yung art card mo. Yung yes. uh, bahay Ayan. kubo na ginagawa mm. nyo, yung sa picture. Okay. Apo, Now, apo. Okay. So, ito Mag po yung... Uh, ang unang tanong yeah. ng mga Pilipino, magkano ba yan? O, mag apo. So, ito, Kong Loren, this unit that we're setting up in um, Pampanga, this is just 89,000 pesos po. Wow! Um, tawag namin po dito ay Batanes Origin. It's 6.5 square meters. Um, pero pwede po siyang lagyan ng loft level para sa bed. Uh, kahit po hanggang double bed, kasha po dyan sa, sa loft level nito uh, dahil high ceiling siya na uh, design. Ilang so, square meters? So sa baba, pwede rin siyang lagyan ng, ng... How many square meters? 6.5 po. Isang, this is 6.5 square meters. Uh, we're currently building here. Um, pwede rin po siyang lagyan ng bathroom and kitchen na sa loob. It's a very compact design. So okay. we were able to to design it uh, uh, well so that we can fit a bathroom, a kitchen, a closet, and a bed inside. No, So if you're looking for a very quick housing solution na for, for single use or like a, a young couple, pwede po siyang gamitin ng Batanes Origin. So isa po ito sa mga standard models namin. Gawa po yan sa uh, um, kawayan. No? Pure engineered bamboo from the lumber that we use here. This is pure engineered bamboo up to the boards um, na aming ginagamit pang cover ng bahay. No? Okay. So 
Ano ang iyong uh, role? Sa, namin, sa, is isa, sa mga model po namin. Okay. Okay, um, we started po our, our company in 2019. Um, and then uh, so far we've, uh, we've uh, manufactured around Mm. Yes po, for thing that standard um standard steel po. Um we do not aside from the engineer bamboo po. Um the high standard um components na. So uh, everything that we use is compliant with um the international residential code and of course the national building kaya po um kung nagiiip na kung po madali po tayong makakuha um, building permit sa mga local government um, dahil lahat po ay compliant sa ating mga local codes local building codes no so um, I'm just waiting for my screen to be shared so I can just walk you through our story po okay you can show pwede mo pakita early yung iba mong art cards na that you prepared so you can tell us about the materials you use as well as the requirements uh, for such a Kubo modular. Okay, are you online? Are you still with us? I know that you're on site. Are you still with us? Okay, I lost you. Are you still with us? Oh, if you're no longer with us, um, we can proceed. Did I lose you? Okay, we'll get back to you. In the meantime, what happened to him? He's in Pampanga. Shaina sa Pampanga. Uh, can someone call him up if he will rejoin us? Sayang napaka interesting. Are you still with us, Earl? Kasama ka ba namin? Anawawala ang cell site? No internet? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, why? We started and how the concept of uh, Kubo was born uh, through my presentation. Okay. Yes. Are you still with us, Earl? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm here. proceed. Uh, please show us yes. uh, so the other part next slide. parts. Okay, next slide. Um, I think, uh, Kong Lauren, uh, you know this problem very well. Uh, you wrote the um, Batas po para mabuo yung Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. We have 4 million houses backlog currently in the whole Philippines. And um, tinataya po na kada taon mula 2020, kailangan natin magtayo ng 1.2 million affordable houses para po lahat ng Pinoy by 2030 ay magkaroon ng bahay. No? Ngayon, ang problema po natin ay sa kada 1.2 million po na yun, 200,000 houses lang ang nabubuo kada taon dahil yun lang um, capacity ng ating local construction industry. No? Ibig sabihin, isang milyon kada taon ang magiging um, uh, kakulangan sa mga bagong bahay na sana ay makakapag-house uh, sa mga Pinoy. No? So kung titingnan natin ito ng, uh, sa, sa surface, Mandaling sabihin na, didamihan na lang natin yung production. Let's use more material. Uh, let's hire more people. And let's produce those houses. Pero kung ganun po yung susundan natin na uh, thinking, makikita natin kaagad yung susunod na problema. Next slide po. The next problem we encounter is that all of our um, standard construction materials, cement, iron, steel, polystyrene, those are all carbon emitters. In fact, 5 to 7% of global CO2 emissions are caused by cement production. So iron and steel naman po, uh, Deputy Speaker, 11% of global CO2 emissions. No? So, napakalaking bahagi or napakalaking uh, contribution sa carbon emission ng mga construction materials. No? Meron pong nauuso ngayon, polystyrene for modular housing, Isa rin po sa pinakamalaki naman, 3 tons of carbon dioxide ang nai-emit niya sa kada tonelada ng polystyrene na pinaproduce para sa housing industry. So ngayon po, paano, yun, uh, paano, uh, paano naman namin na-step yung idea ng Kubo? Nagsimula po yan, next slide po. Tinatawag natin Cities for a Future Challenge ng Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. No? So they ask um, ano po, uh, mga designers, architects, engineers all over the world to present 
solutions to yung mga uh, kaakibat na nagiging problema ng pag pagdagsa uh, ng tao sa ating mga syudad no so isa na nga po yun ang housing isa na nga po ang housing sa mga problema yon no so ito po yung pinaka pinakaunang concept ng kubo based on our, our bamboo poles um, we designed a, a house po na for for uh, dual living single living Uh, na merong kama, may uh, workstation sa baba at closet, bathroom at kitchen. No? Ito po yung earliest model of a Kubo house that we started in 2018. No? So we proposed the material engineered bamboo. So next slide po. As our main, main, as our main material. So bakit po? Um, engineered bamboo is a regular kawayan. Pero ginawa po siyang lumber, pinres, para maging lumber at boards. No? So by doing that and pre-treating it before doing that, we render it termite and anay, uh, termite and uh, weevil resistant. So yung bukbok, ana hindi na po siya kakainin dahil we already de degrade all the, the um, energy uh, source components ng kawaya na pwede nilang makain. No? So... Um, kung ikukumpara po natin <clears throat> yung properties na engineered bamboo sa ating kamagong, yakal, and of course concrete, engineered bamboo is up to 14 times stronger in tensile strength than our um, standard standard uh, construction materials. Bukod pa po ron, ito yung pinakamalaki. Kung, uh, Deputy Speaker, sinabi niyo na po kanina, nagsa-sequester ng carbon ng engineered bamboo. Tama po yun. Sa kada tonelada na napoproduce na engineered bamboo, 600 kilograms or 0.6 tons na ang naka-harvest nila. Ang naka-harvest nila na carbon dioxide. No? So, yun po ang isa sa mga benefits, main benefits, environmental benefits ng uh, bamboo. No? So next slide po. <clears throat> so we combine that with um, a modular housing solution. No? So what we do po is we produce our panels in a factory. So yung nakita niyo po kanina. Uh, we produce that in a factory. We pack it with uh, with Um, shipping container natin on site no so yan po ganyan po namin siya i-deliver uh, at pagdating sa site napakadali po ang i-assemble napakabilis um ayan po kararating lang po namin dito ngayong umaga pero almost tapos na hanggang bubong so ganyan po kabilis na kaya namin i-set up ang um, kubo housing so next slide po so dahil po diyan tayo po yung ano nagkamit ng pinakamataas na na gantip pala doon sa patimpalak na yon ng RICS no so ang RICS po Royal Institution of Strategic Surveyors ay grupo ng more than 500,000 ah uh, 250,000 na construction professionals sa buong mundo no so at tayo po mga Pinoy ang ang napili nila bilang uh, uh, kumaga global winner for for this competition so next slide bro so uh tumanggap rin po tayo ng iba't ibang recognition uh from international organizations like BBC World Economic Forum dahil po kakaiba sa kakaiba, dahil po sa kakaiba nating uh, solution sa housing crisis na ito sige po next slide Uh, pati po ang uh, Forbes na ibinilang po tayo sa Forbes 30 under 30 social entrepreneurs in, in Asia. At uh, isa po sa mga pinaka, uh, kumbaga, pinaka highlight na ating um, ang journey is yung nakapagsalita po tayo sa UN headquarters uh, sa Kenya to share the story of Kubo and our solution. For those who don't know, um, Earl is only 25 years old. Tama? <laughs> uh -oh. yes, uh, this is a very new company, only two years old, and mm, uh, magamit ng indigenous material, ang bamboo, at siya isang napakabatang entrepreneur. Natutuwa kami sa ginagawa mo. <laughs> Salamat po. Salamat po, Earl, 
saan mo kinokolekta ang iyong bambu? Ikaw ba ay bumibili mm-hmm. sa mga bambu farmers? I- ikaw mm-hmm. ba ang nagtatanim ng inyong bambu? Anong klaseng bambu? Philippine bambu? Mm-hmm. At ang manufacturing ba ito ay ikaw pa rin o binibili mo na yung bambu na gawa na at engineered na? Um, una-una po, yung sa local bamboo na, ka, na species na kailangan natin, kailangan po natin ng kawayang tinik at giant bamboo. No? So, kawayang sa kada, tinik, okay. Yes, kawayang tinik at giant bamboo. So lahat po ng nakakausap natin na potential partners for bamboo, so pro bamboo supply, um, yun po yung hinahanap natin. Uh, kung, so kung may nakikinig po na interesado ang mag-supply, yun po. Um, pangalawa po, meron kami mga partner na producers ng engineered bamboo. So kinukuha na po, pagkakuha po namin ito ay boards na at lumber na. At ang ginagawa po namin sa aming um, factory sa Valenzuela ay yung modular panels na meron na naka-install na electrical, plumbing, lahat ng mga ilaw, pinto, bintana, um, kahit lock, doorknob, nakakabit na po. Kaya po pagdating namin sa site, sobrang bilis i-install. So... Uh, sa kasalukoy po, kailangan namin isupplement yung supply namin ng engineered bamboo ng imported kasi meron uh, sa buong bansa po, wala po tayong malaking engineered bamboo na manufacturer, engineered bamboo supply locally. Um, kaya po sa may, kung may nakikinig na nais mag, uh, mag-delve into the production of engineered bamboo, Nakasigurado po kayo na meron na kayo kaagad customers sa Kubo Modular. Okay. No? Pakiulit mo ang mga species o uri yes. ng Philippine bamboo na ginagamit Apo. mo. Kasi Apo. kikinig ang uh, antike, ang University mm-hmm. Antike. Ako yes, inagtayo ng Bamboo Processing Center. Bago pa kita, mm, uh, bago pa kita <laughs> makilala ngayon ay Apo. two years ago, ay pinonduhan ko ang Bamboo Processing mm. Facility and I will link you up with Ed Manda of the Bamboo Association. Yun. So, dapat i-link natin yung nagtatani, yung nag-harvest, yes, meron yes. mga facility mag-engineer o manufacture at kayo ang gumagamit ng Apo. output. Pero balik ako sa tanong ko. Yes, tama po. Anong mm. uri ng bamboo ang ginagamit mm. ko? Tinik? Ano okay, yun? Okay, Kawayang tinik, kawayang, tinik. Uh, kawayang tinik at giant bamboo. No? Okay. So yun po. Yun giant uri. bamboo. Ano yung sabi mm. mong ini-import mo pa na wala dito? Baka maaring, sigurado ako maaring itanim. Nakikinig ngayon si Attorney Opo. Pat Luna ng DENR. Mm. And uh, we can uh, call the DNR and ask that the National Greening Program uh, mm. focus its efforts on bamboo planting para magamit Opo. ng mga entrepreneurs gaya mo. So, yes, maliban sa dalawang yun, ano yung kailangan mo na wala sa Pilipinas, sabi mo, na ipapatanim ko? Opo. Um, okay. Yun pong, yun pong um, ini-import po natin na uh, engineered bamboo na ay gawa rin sa giant bamboo. So, kung meron na pong makapagtatanim ng giant bamboo at kawaya ang tinik dito at magagawa pong engineered bamboo na boards at lumber, yun na po ang hinahanap natin sa Kubo. So magagamit po natin yun. Ang, sa pagkakaalam ko po, yung Department of Trade and Industry, meron po talaga silang the, uh, program for engineered bamboo production. So if uh, we can cooperate with them as well to use their existing ano po, mga, mga makinarya yes. uh, to employ the people they train. Kasi meron na pong program. Eh. So meron ng yes. tao, may manpower, may Very good. machine. Yun na lang po, yung cooperation na lang yung kailangan natin na i-forge. Okay. With, uh, Very good. Agency. Earl, naging meeting ito. Itong gagawin ko. <laughs> the, the DTI Shared Services Facilities ay nagbibigay yes, ng mga equipment para mm. sa bamboo. In fact, sila ang nagpondo ng aking bamboo processing facility. Pangalawa, ang DOLE Pangkabuhayan ay isang programa ng Department of Labor para magbigyan ng livelihood ng mga tao. Okay partner ang Dole Pangkabuhayan, ang DTI Shared Services Facility, Facilities. Okay. At ang akin, ating DENR National Greening Program ay nakafocus sa bambu. So, yes, we will okay. have a uh, not just a tripartite uh, cooperation at ikaw naman sa private sector so that you do yes, have okay. import bambu. Yes, we can have massive planting here and harvesting and 
uh, engineering doesn't have mm -hmm. to be magagarang mga factory. It can be Opo. small pockets of factories Tama in the po. provinces para magkaroon ng engineered bamboo production. Di ba? Yes, po. Thank you, sample, po. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I, oh. I will challenge you. Uh, mm. Nagawan mo ako, I will pay, ng, uh, ng isang kubo modular, pero gusto ko lahat Philippine-made bamboo na walang mm -hmm. import. Ed, kaya mo yan. Sige po. Kaya, mo. kaya po. Kaya, kaya po natin yan, Deputy Speaker. Yes, kaya, kaya mo yan. Natin yan. So, because um, I know that China does it and they're very efficient Apo. about it. Walang Apo. dahilan na hindi magawa sa Pilipinas. So, Tama po. Uh, natutuwa ako sa ginagawa mo and this can really have a domino effect on employment and entrepreneurship in the provinces and even agriculture. However, Kung kaya natin at kaya natin na wag mag-import, dito gawin. So, list mo ang materials mo. Ano yung, ano yung ini-import mo? Yung ini-import yes, mo, you work with a DTI that have the resources to give the equipment to the people. We have our mm -hmm. skilled workers and our artisans to do it. Opo, so, you don't opo, have to po. Opo. Thank so, you very much. Gagawa po. tayo, gagawa tayo ng uh, kubo, kubo modular para kay Loren na walang imported. Ha? Kaya mo yan. <laughs> yes, thank you po. Kaya po natin okay. yan, Deputy Speaker. Yes, um, I don't want thank you to, very much. I don't want to bother you any further because I can see that you're constructing. Uh, <laughs> I-clarify ko nga. It's okay po. 6.5 square meters lamang? Okay. Opo. So, sa 6.5 square meters po, Deputy Speaker. Nakagawa na tayo ng isang bahay na pwedeng lagyan ng kitchen, ng a small shower at toilet, closet Talaga? at loft. Okay. So, okay. ganun po natin i-dinesign. Yung kaninang letrato po. Ng, po. ng mga interesado yeah. sa www.kubo.com. Okay. Um, before I let you go to your construction, ay yung una mong letrato kanina, yung square yes, bahay, Yan ba yung natayo mo or iba yon? It looks iba, na, iba naman po yon. Um, so yung tawag po doon ay aming saranggani model that's 29 square meters naman, uh, ah, Deputy Speaker. Pagkano naman yung 29 square meters? So yung 29 po, nagsisimula po siya sa 299,000 pesos lamang. So 29 square, so lumalabas po na halos 10,000 lang per square meter yung starting prices ng saranggani model. no? So that's our biggest model. Pwede rin po yung lagyan ng um, loft at dalawang bedroom yung 29. So, uh, oh. nagsisimula po siya sa 20, 299,000 pesos. At lahat ng iyong ginagawa ay finished na, ibig sabihin. Opo. Meron Tama ng po. lapag, meron ng yes. kisame, meron Opo. ng hubong, meron ng meron bintana, po. at meron ng electrical at saka plumbing. Ganun Tama ba po. Tama po. So, pagkatapos po namin i-assemble sa loob ng isang araw, pwede na pong uh, tirhan kagad-agad yung bahay na yon na aming ginagawa. So, pure engineered bamboo floors, engineered bamboo walls, engineered bamboo ceiling, pati yung structural materials, pure engineered bamboo. So, yun po. Makikita po natin dito ang aming small uh, production facility in Valenzuela. So, yan po ang framing system namin. Kawayan po yan, pati yung boards na yan, kawayan din. And then, ito naman yung susunod namin na, uh, ito naman yung process naman po kung paano namin dinadala sa site, no? So, kinakarga po namin yan sa truck lang, pong, uh, deputy speaker. So, so um, interesting. Na, natutuwa ako, natutuwa. Pero teka, salamat ano ang bubong po, mo? Salamat. Hindi naman pwedeng bubong ang naka-expose sa, sa yes. uh, ulan. Ano ang Opo. bubong? Opo. So, ano? yung bubong po na yan, nakikita nyo dyan sa picture ay stone coated steel no so um yero po iyan na kinote ng bato so okay. yung bato po na yon nagse-serve na sound insulator heat insulator at at the same time to prevent rusting no so yun po yung isang benefit ng roofing material na yan stone coated steel po natutuwa ako sa iyo i'll get back Thank to you another po. time in the meantime um at patuloy mo at sana i-share mo sa amin yung Pampanga House na tinatayo mo sa gitna yes. interview. Thank you po. Are you telling us that by sunset today ay natayo mo yes. na yung bahay na yan? Opo, opo. Yun po okay. ang, uh, yun po ang uh, okay. aming uh, I, um, baka na-delay ng one hour dahil sa akin. 
I asked the climate change commission, <laughs> uh, Victoria, to give me, to give me uh, an actual photo of the house that Earl is uh, building in uh, Pampanga. Hindi sa hindi ako naniniwala mm -hmm. sa'yo. Natutuwa lang ako sa ginagawa yes. ng isang 25 years old. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And, um, oh, importante nga pala, ha? Yung iyong ginagawa sa factory, huwag kayo gumamit ng single-use mm -hmm. plastic. At kung kailangan nyo itapon ang inyong plastic yes, na ginagamit, course. ay i-plastic credit exchange ninyo, ha? Okay. Now, we go to... Thank <laughs> you. Po. I'll be in touch with you. Thank you. Gagawa thank you tayo po. ng version ko na walang imported. At saka, yes, sana, sana, imbis na salamin na jalousies, ay pwedeng... Mm -hmm. Mga lumang bintana na kapis galing sa mm. mga Ayun. That would be nice po. That would be nice. Yun ang aking nice. innovation. Para wag na rin glass, recycle yes. na rin ang bintana mula sa mga lumang oh, wow. kapis. Lumang aking, kapis. Yes, aking opisina sa Senado, ang cabinet ko, hindi mga steel cabinet, pati sa oh, wow. kongreso, ay oh. lumang bintana ng lumang bahay ang aking mga cabinet. Pwede rin oh, okay. gawin bintana. Ayun, yes. ha? Ayun. Okay. Ayun. Sige Thank po. You. Sorry, na, maraming salamat. Nakikialam ang Lauren Legarda sa Kubo Modular. Sige. <laughs> Hindi okay. po. Thank you. <laughs> salamat Now, po. Maraming po. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mula sa plastic at pagbabawal ng single-use plastic at pagresikulo sa circular economy ng plastic, Hanggang sa paggagamit ng kawayang tinik at ng Philippine bamboo sa mga housing. Low cost, medium cost, sustainable housing. Ngayon, pagkain. Wow, we end. Malapit ang tangalian. Si Chef Tatung Sartu is an author and culinary heritage advocate at host. Siya isang award-winning chef and best-selling author. Yung kanyang online show na simple ba ang tawag? Simple or sample? Simple. Simple ang luto. Tuturuan mo ako ha. With more than 800,000 followers. Ah, mga mabibilis na recipe na masasarap at mga tips ang kanyang uh, sinishare sa atin. Okay. At maghalaga dito, uh, slow food at um, local finds sa market. Alam mo, chef, ay, ako yung nagtatanim. I grow my own food as well. But I'll let you speak And one of your published books, From Heart to Platter, I love that, that won first place. But puro tayo award-winning ngayon. Sa Renew, Restart, Refresh, New Year, puro award-winning. Okay, itong Heart to Platter, first place for Gourmand World Cookbook Awards. Chef Tatung believes that simple is about embracing a more open minded a very practical doable cooking method and he makes the traditional food and modern cooking easier yan ang gusto ko kasi sa mga bising kamukha namin kamukha ngayon oh pwede kong pakita ang kinakain ko almusal ko oh ang aking organic egg ang laman nito petchay at bokchoy at arugula na aking tinanim at ang pagtubig ko sa aking gulay ay galing sa tubig ulan sa water catchment at ang aking compost ay galing sa food waste at dry leaves. Ayan, ayan. Susubo. Itong almusal ko, <laughs> uh, kasi nagusubok ako maging pescatarian. Hindi ko kaya maging full vegetarian. But okay. So, Chef Tato, show us your Good art. Good morning. Art. Good morning. Ma yeah. Mayat nga aga, kaninyo yeah. matanan. Um, Tagasan ka ba? Tagasan ka ba? Mayang buntag. O, oh, taga Cebu Mayang buntag. Oh. Okay. Oh, Mayang buntag sa mga taga Cebu. Oh. Okay. Um, Good morning, Deputy Speaker. Oh, such an honor to to be here today. And ang ang akin talagang advocacy talaga is really uh, educating people about you know, uh, food, no? Pero through cooking, kasi um yung yung napansin ko kasi dito sa Pilipinas kasi we glamorize too much foreign food, eh, di ba? Parang yun ang nagiging bataya natin ng parang um you know um pagiging Um, well put in society, no. Pero alam ko when I started in my culinary journey, nagsisimula talaga tayo sa Western food. Pero narealize ko kasi na tayo mga Pinoy, we really enjoy Filipino food more than just you know eating foreign food. 
And nakita ko din dahil sa aking mga research um, when I was writing my book was that ang dami palang food sources sa Pilipinas. If you go around the country, ang dami yung mga ingredients, di ba? mga local finds, di ba? mga akala nating damo or mga you know mga stray plants pero edible pala siya mga edibles pala siya so na-realize ko na sa Pilipinas dapat walang nagugutom no so yung kakibat ng aking uh, advocacy hindi lang yung hindi lang yung sinasabi natin nakakain tayo ng masarap pero ang punto ko din is paano mas marami tayong nakakakain di ba mga mga Filipino kasi very challenging yan ngayon lalo na ngayon na sobrang mahal ng ating mga bilihin sobrang mahal na ating pagkain so um one thing that uh, we should do ako I'll just go go directly to my advocacy no is to really educate people on how to prepare food at home and how to be able to be more economical no so right now nakikita natin na sobrang mahal talaga ng ating uh, pagkain so it's best for people to start cooking at home. Pero we also have to realize na hindi tayo pwedeng to go full on na uh, dependent tayo sa um, yung uh, natural food, di ba? organic and all that. Kasi kailangan natin duman muna sa tinatawag kong hybriding na pagluluto na gumagamit tayo ng um, uh, natural products, so mga real food, pero kailangan din natin mag-mix in ng konting convenience foods. Kasi yun na nga, hindi naman lahat tayo may mga malalaking mga kusina, hindi naman tayo lahat na well-skilled. So, ginagawa namin sa Simple is to really educate people to come up with food solutions um, na accessible sa mga tao, na very relevant, kung paano magluto yung tao, hindi yung medyo masyadong pa Western cooking show. Pero yung uh, practical natin dito sa bahay, no? practical natin sa ating anak buhay practical sa ating uh, antas ng um, kita no so we have to cook seasonally kasi sometimes kasi natatay up tayo sa pagluluto natin na nasisilaw tayo sa kung anong nagiging uso pero we really have to teach our people to go to the marketplace no to to visit farmers markets no to go around your area kung ano yung available at ano yung mura kaya cooking should not be recipe based though nagluto tayo ng recipes pero mas importante sa atin na iintindihan ng tao yung fundamentals ng pagluluto uh, how to be able to react to cooking how to react to ingredients and come up with your own recipes no so um yun um next slide please yan so yeah, next slide please. Yeah. So, yung ginagawa din natin no is um, uh, how to reduce food waste. Kasi sometimes kasi dito sa bahay, ang dami na sasayang na pagkain because we don't know what to do with them. So, it's we have to be number 1 a smart shopper, no. Um what we do, we we make a market list of what we need especially right now na we have to be very economical kasi pati yung mga people na may kita, medyo nahirapan lalo na kaya yung mga hindi masyadong malaki yung kita. No? So, you have to be very practical. Kailangan natin maging madiskarte. Kailangan natin to be able to um, look beyond. No? Hindi lang yung kakain tayo today. Pero paano natin um, to make use of our food? Paano natin ma-stretch yung budget, stretch yung ingredients? So, yan. To plan ahead, very importantly na um, magluluto tayo ng kasya lang or kung magluluto tayo ng sobra, yung sobra natin, yung foods that have longer shelf life. So, for example, magluto tayo ng adobo, pwede mong damihan kasi kahit three days after, four days after, pwede mo siyang makain. Pero, for example, gagawa ka ng shop soy or vegetable dishes, kung kontean mo lang yung kaya mo kainin at one time. Kaya, kasi the next day, pag ininit mo siya, hindi na siya palatable, na hindi na siya maganda tingnan. At saka, hindi na siya appealing kainin. No? So, also, yung ginagawag, sinuturo din namin sa simple select, how to use um, mga considered nating food waste. No? Though we can recycle, pero for example, yung mga tira-tira natin na vegetables, like for example sa cabbage, the core can be set aside. Pwede mong gawin dyan, i-add mo sa paggawa mo ng achara. No? Pwede din yung mga vegetable peels mo, i-add mo sa paggawa mo ng soup stock mo. No? So, um, you can use your food waste in two ways. One, as to be part as a flavoring to your food. And another part also, pwede mo ding i-compose so we can have our own gardens, di ba? 
small vegetable garden, meron tayong cutting herbs kasi nagdadagdag siya ng flavor pero hindi siya nagdadagdag masyado ng calories, di ba? Pag gumagamit tayo ng herbs, no? And to preserve food properly, we have to store them properly as well. So, yun ang very important. And use leftovers wisely. Of course, wag tayo magsayang. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, um, when we use, uh, you know, um, dapat medyo we have to be creative. Kaya sa amin, what we do with our, our site, we have a website also, simple.ph. We have recipes doon. Sobrang mahanap ng mga ideas doon. No, so sa amin, we also really want to focus on education, making this information accessible to to all the all the you know um, uh, all the Filipinos. Kaya yung content namin has to be very Filipino relevant. No, so aside from from that, we also coordinate like ako uh, as a restaurant tour. Um, ginagawa ko din. We also work with local farmers. We also parang um you know educate our own people on you know proper food handling we also teach people on recycling we also teach people we're also trying to make our own efforts in kahit maliit lang kami yung effort namin sa pagdelimit ng use ng you know um ng plastics yeah you know uh, ginagawa din namin though it's very difficult in the restaurant industry no and you can always be very creative no in finding solution pero ang kailangan din natin is really um, coordinating with you know the people around no especially like uh, as an industry kasi may grupo din ng mga restaurateurs who are finding ways to find solutions sa food waste and especially yung uh, finding use sa leftovers sa mga restaurants na ang daming nagugutom di ba so yun din yung ginagawa natin ng paraan na we're able to share some of our leftovers with um these people. Yeah, next slide please. Yeah. So, ito lang siya some ideas na, na magagawa natin for um um dishes like for example, may tira tayong chicken, you can convert it to like a chicken sisig or you can have your um uh, chicken pa rin, gawin mo uh, sotang sotang hon soup. So, yun lang talaga yung ways natin um, na pwede natin uh, matipid. No? And the bones of the chicken can even be used to make your own soup stock. So, yun lang fra from me right now. And I just like to, you know, uh, you know my, my recent book. No? So, my first book, yung Philippine Cookery. Ito yung uh, nanalo sa World German Awards. Um, pero this book, my, my recent book also, it's nominated din sa... Uh, World Gourmet Award for three categories and we'll be representing the Philippines din sa um, Paris, France ngayong June. Sana manalo ulit din. What we're trying to do is we're also trying to make it very accessible to people kasi yung recipes natin, what we do is we digitalize the content as well. So after you you, you read the recipe, but if you scan the QR code, it goes directly to the video. Kasi yung sa amin, we want to be able to teach people. Kasi iba yung learning modalities ng mga tao. Some people um, learn better when they're reading. Some people um, learn better when um, when napapanood nila or naririnig nila. So yun ang ginagawa namin. And also, one of my other books yun, um, uh, Discarte sa Cusina, we tried to, uh, we created a book um, on teaching uh, Filipinos um, kitchen skills. And it was written in Tagdich kasi maraming tao, especially for livelihood, yung mga taong, uh, alam mo, sa food industry natin, the F&B industry, around 70 to 80% kasi, especially in the countryside, hindi mga culinary school graduates. No? So sometimes, iba, especially sa tourism, no? so we're, we're um, working with tourism also, yung um, nagiging problema, like for example, former farmer, and pumapasok sa FNB kasi marami nang uh, pumapasok sa ecotourism, wala talagang background sa kitchen, sa proper food handling, yung uh, basic uh, culinary skills. So, we wrote a book, yung Discarte sa Cusina, to be able to teach these people um, uh, culinary skills uh, in Taglish. Kasi sometimes, nagiging lost in translation, very culturally yung difference ng uh, paglaki nila sa probinsya. And the way you know, um, foreigners or some people na medyo lumaki sa city would perceive what quality is, what good food is. Kaya, um, yun ang uh, ginagawa ko sa Simple is more, we focus on culinary education, we focus also on, yan, our advocacies uh, with the farmers and all that. Yan. Thank you very much. Very good.
uh, the books yes. that you mentioned, pasensya na ako'y sumubo ng konti sa aking uh, pinakita sa iyong pagkain dahil yun ang aking almusal. So, paano mo ituturo sa mga chef, sa mga may restaurant, sa mga housewife, sa mga busy kamukha ko, pero sumusubo habang nag-webinar, ang advocacy natin na zero food waste, pangalawa, ang paghihiwalay ng basura sa nabubulok at hindi nabubulok, paano natin i-embrace yan bilang isang lifestyle lifestyle change? Ako naman kasi, um, uh, Deputy Speaker, sa akin kasi, we really have to change our perspective. Kasi ang, ang problema kasi natin na natatali tal- talaga tayo sa perspective na Masosyal, diba? Especially the culinary industry is really pegged on that kind of thinking. So we really have to give practical solutions. Kaya kami, ako, ako sa symbol, kasi I'm a, I'm a trained chef and um, I'm exposed to Western cuisine. Pero sometimes kasi nagiging lost in translation. If we, if we force the Filipino household to, to cook in that manner, so kailangan natin to create content, to be able to create materials teaching materials, content na accessible sa kanila, nakikita nila ng practical solution sa mga bahay-bahay nila. Di ba? Kasi ah. sometimes nakikita natin, especially ang daming chef, masyadong nagpapakashef. Ay, hindi yan, mali yan. Always, di ba, for a trained chef, you always see what's wrong with what people do. Pero you have to do it in a way na naintindihan nila yung konteksto ng sinasabi mo. But you also have to understand the context of the Filipino household. Hindi pwedeng from the outside looking in ka eh. Kaya yung ng success namin dito sa Simple Set, very practical, very real life yung okay. ano yung practical, ano yung kayang intindihan ng housewife at ano kaya niyang gawin. Tatanong ko sa'yo, uh, Chef Sartu, Chef Tatong. Ako, ito totoo, ako ang nagtatanim ng aking kinakain. At mm-hmm. hindi ko pinaplano ang aking pagkain ayon sa recipe at nakita ko yun sa sinabi mo. In fact, pinaplano ko ang kakainin ko ayon sa aking produktong harvest sa araw yeah. o linggong yun. Okay, example. Nung linggo, ako ay nag-harvest maraming bokchoy at lechugas. So mula ng lunes, Thursday na ngayon, apat na araw na. At saka ako, isang ulam lang akong tao. Ang kinain ko, ay ginisang pechay. Yung susunod, naglagay ng konting noodles na merong pok choy. May konting chicken chips. Yung pechay ko, ginisa, may konting shrimp. Kaya hindi pa ako uh, pure vegetarian. So, ibig ko sabihin, um, maganda siguro maging um, lifestyle change. Tama ka? Hindi, ah, ito yung recipe, ah, bibili tayo nito. Walang kasamang gawin yon Pero siguro kung nagsitipid, kung gusto natin maging mas sustainable, magtanim kung ano yung harvest for the day or for the week, yun ang ulam mo. Tama yon Exactly. Yun ang, yun ang sinasabi ko talaga dito sa yung advocacy ko. Kasi sometimes nafe-feel ko, nagiging oppressive, di ba? For example, mag-post ako ng recipe, mag-post ka ng recipe, ito yung linuto ko. Ang dami kagad nagbabas. Hindi naman yan ganyan, hindi naman yan tama yan, hindi naman yan ganyan yung tamang ingredients and all that. Ako naman yung paninindigan ko dyan is that dapat ang taong gumagawa ng paraan na papakainin niya yung pamilya niya. Walang mali doon. Especially from a perspective of a mother na gumagawa ng paraan na papakainin siya. Kaya yung first book ko kasi, hindi siya re- recipe-based. So what we did in the first book is um, tinitrace namin yung Philippine co- cooking method. We want to teach people cooking method. So you can do anything with what you have. Hindi ka nakatali na kaldereta. Ano kailangan ko sa kaldereta? Nakalista Tama. siya. Pero Meron akong ganito English, ano yung pwede kong gawin? So that people are able to adapt, people are able to change gear pag wala yung hinahanap nila. And sometimes nakikita ko naman, alam naman natin yan sa food industry, pinagpipilit yung ingredient, isang recipe, because nabibenta ni yung products nila, di ba? Naintindihan naman natin yan, pero dapat hindi dekahon yung pagluluto natin because to be able to feed a lot of people kasi, kailangan natin maging creative. Like for example, um, di ba? like yung dahon ng kamoting kahoy. Alam ba natin nakakain yan? Not all provinces no nakakain siya, naluluto siya na parang laing. Pero usually tinatapon din siya sa ibang areas, di ba? Like yung banana, yung trunk ng banana, sa ibang areas ay pagkaing baboy yan. But in some areas, it's cooked into a vegetable. It's called ubad. 
uh, in Iloilo and it can feed a family. So yun ang point ko, no? For chefs, hindi tayo masyado dapat na nag-glamorize, di ba? Dapat tayo, maghanap tayo ng uh, Philippine ingredients accessible sa mga provinces and find creative solutions na makaluto ka ng masarap Aha. na accessible. Kasi sa akin, dapat walang magutom, di ba? I don't want to, kaya ako, hindi ako, hindi ako masyadong uh, fan of um yung very fancy hot na di ba yung mga yung mga fancy Filipino food kasi sabi ko if Filipinos can't afford that you can't call it Filipino food di ba if it's okay. just glamorized well actually chef to each his own uh kung yes, kaya exactly. bakit okay. hindi pero ako kasi i guess pareho tayo simple lang ako eh at saka tuwang-tuwa ako na yung linalang hapkot kinakain ko Tinanim ko mula sa buto. Example lang sabi mo, pag nagluto kami ng sinigang. Ako kasi, bawal talaga ang maski anong uh, seasoning na hindi natural. So, kung wala akong batuan na galing sa Iloilo o sa Antique, pero meron akong batuan na puno, kung walang bunga, gagamitin ko kasi ang dami ngayon ng kamyas, ang tataba ng aking kamyas uh, na harvest ngayon. Kung hindi naman yung aking libas, hindi ba? Pwede, uh, yes, libas pwede leaves. Libas, Pwede libas leaves, pwede ang batuan, at pwede ang kamyas, at sampalok, at marami pang iba. Sampalong. At mm. pati na yung mga dahon ng rosel, hindi ba? Oh, yes, na- oh. dahon at bunga. Oh. At bunga, okay. Yung rosel naman, na pulaklak, yan ay ginagawa kong um, tea. So masarap tea, na pulang yes. tea yan, a vitamin C yan at antioxidant. Yeah. At yan ay ginagawa ko rin marmalade. At pwede rin pampaasi. Para ako nagturo sa chef, di ba? Nakakahiya. Pero... <laughs> okay. Bala ganyan na sa libro ko. Like, for example, uri ng pang-asin. Ayan. O sa magagamit. Yan. So, ganito yung ginagawa namin na... Ang ganda niyan. Gusto very informative yan. Very good. Very good. Oh. So, I'll, I'll send you a copy. Yan. So, ito, like, for example, coconut. Different foods na kukuha from the coconut. Different forms of the... Different kinds of suka to can, the ferment. Can you show us the cover? The... Can you show us the cover? But this is already sold out, so um, we're trying to release. Uh, we're trying to release a uh, second edition this year. So ah. uh, hopefully, matapos namin siya. Oh. Sige, bibili sana ako para gawin kong premio dito sa ating programa. Oh. Pero kung hindi na available, um, uh. tell us when it's available para we can support yeah. it for a good cause as well. Thank Salamat, you very uh, much. Ano ang Thank you. Uh, last words mo uh, for today? Uh, anong pwede mong ibilin? sa ating mga Facebook viewers na babasahin ko yung iba. At uh, for those who are online, we will give away 10 starter kits for gardening from the Department of Agriculture, Agriculture wow. Training Institute. Magbibigay din tayo ng limang protected areas guidebook that I did when I was senator along with the Biodiversity Management Bureau of the DNR. But first, we listen to you in the last few words before we call it a day and have a heart to platter lunch. Okay, Chef Sartu. <laughs> yes, anong masasabi mo? Yeah. So let, yes. Let, let's keep things simple kasi right now, especially in this time, you have to be very practical. Let us focus on what is essential, what is important that we feed our family, masarap, nutritious, kaya sa budget, no? So let's let's not do it muna as a status symbol because sometimes we use food as a status symbol. Not that it's bad, but sometimes you really have to be sure that nakakain lahat, especially hindi lang tayo nakakain. So I want to be able to cook food and teach people recipes na hindi lang ako makakain, pati yung farmers makakain, pati yung mga purveyors nakakain. Yes. And I hope yun, supportahan nyo kami sa sa ginagawa namin, mga advocacy, not just me, but all of us, kasi parang uh, it, we're really interconnected. No? So what we do will affect every aspect of our society. So yun lang. Ikaw ba'y nagtatanim ng iyong mga ginagamit na gulay? Do you grow your own food? Or do you get from Yes, gulay. And yes, I, I also have a small farm. Yeah. yeah. So I have a lot of fruits. Fruits and yan, uh, mga vegetables. Yeah. Okay. We will exchange, exchange storya. Magstorya tayo ng ating mga... Storya na magstorya ta. Oh, ating yeah. mga balay. Ikaw ba ilonggo? Oh. Bisaya. Bisaya. Cebu. Bisaya. Sa Cebu. Sa Cebu. Okay. Sa Cebu, oh. So, uh, we will exchange our stories on our gulayan. Yes. Uh, very good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, 
I know Thank that, you so uh, much. Dagang thank salamat. you. But we'll be in touch. Dagang salamat. Durugid nga salamat. Uh, Earl is no longer with us because he's building his uh, bamboo house in Pampanga. I'm not sure if Nanette uh, is still with us. Can say a goodbye, a few words, if Nanette is still with us. Otherwise, I will read our Facebook messages from Antique, Batangas, Manila, Mandaluyong, Ilocos Norte, Zamboanga del Norte, copies from Alfred Anshado, good morning from Talisay, Batangas, Flor Lopez de Leon, good morning, Raymond Gumbok, hey, our Vice Mayor. Hi, Nanette. Um, say hello, dahil maraming nanonood uh, from Antique up to Tawi-Tawi, up to, yeah. So the last uh, words only for today, but definitely I'll be in touch with Kubo Modular because I want an example of a Loren version of Kubo Modular. I also want to learn more from Chef uh, Tatung sa aking mga tinatanim na kale, arugula, bok choy, at pechay. At gusto ko rin pakuha kay uh, Nanette lahat ng plastic, um, hindi lang ng antike ng buong bansa <laughs> para mawala na yung plastic habang wala pa yung batas ko. Okay, Nanette, just uh, last few words. Thank you so much, Chef uh, Tatung Sartu, for that. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Deputy Speaker Lauren. We are so proud to be here. I just want to say as a last word, uh, yung problema natin sa plastic, I don't think uh, we want to demonize anyone, but I think people in the past, this is an old versus new issue. Uh, it could be that information was not good in the past, so we did not make the best decisions. But this generation, as you can see by our talk today, is the generation who makes better decisions and can actually solve the problems that plague the planet. So please support wherever you can. And thank you so much for hosting such a wonderful show. Thank you so much. Just so much of positivity and can-do attitude and really a collaborative effort from sustainable housing to culinary heritage and hard to platter and reusing, recycling, and making something productive and zeroing our plastic footprint. Thank you so much, Chef Tatung Sardu. Thank you so much, Earl Rosales. Thank you so much, Nanette medved Po and the Climate Change Commission and Mother Earth Foundation and the Institute for Climate and Sustainable Cities and Climate Reality Philippines. And all of you are faithful viewers and we are giving away our Protected Areas Guidebook as well as our DA starter kits. And I'm being a Climate Change Commission with all the bikes I've given last year and all the DA starter kits and the PA guidebooks and the others, we can put them together in one show and see ano nang naitanim nila, ano na ang nabasa at alam nila sa protected areas at kamusta na ang mga bisikleta ang pinamigay natin. So uh, thank you again to our panel who painstakingly uh, did their art cards and their presentations. We appreciate the effort as we recharge, renew, refresh in a sustainable, better normal. So thank you. Uh, we will continue to greet um, George uh, Suruiz, uh, Petrache Suruiz, Junjun de la Cruz uh, from uh, Santa Mesa in Patnongon, Maken from Mandaluyong. We have Vice Mayor Gombok as well. Nene Alongsagay, watching from Manila, Jennifer Lim Jimenez, Makaltao, Anton Kanha, Tonzi Escaño. Hey, Tonzi, you're the one who does my video. Thames Alegado, Abagayas, Nanay, Ilocano, Mangantayon. Okay, Anton uh, Kanja from, oh, Anton, yes, from San Jose. Uh, LV Coaza Morris uh, from DNR Region 9, Senro. All the way from Region 9, Zamwanga, Andre Adimafiles from Kulasi, Neri Francis Estokia from Capis, Jun Bagnol uh, from Bukidnon and Cagayan, Win Win, Agrida 100, uh, Macken. Okay, Pano ba daw ang signal number four sa ating mga bahay? We'll get to that. So, so much more uh, that we have to do. We see you every Thursday at 10 in the morning. I say one hour but it's actually one hour, 35 minutes. We have a short video of my home province of Antique. Always watch us on Facebook and YouTube. You can give your comments and your suggestions. 
It's an energizing, inspiring day. Be safe despite the existence of the variant coronavirus found in the Philippines. Be safe, follow the health protocols, distancing, wash your hands, wear a mask, wear a face shield, follow strictly to the letter to save lives. Duro gid nga salamat, palangga ko kamo ang inyong Inday Loren, former senator, now congresswoman, and a global champion for the environment and climate. Thanking you for living the better normal in a sustainable world. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Ipat. Thank you, all of you. We'll now play Antike and then the contacts of all our guests. Palangga ko kamo. Thank you.